man, what little hair I have and I can't even keep it straight. Oh, man, I tell you, that's frustrating. All right, let's get into it. All right, so I want to show you a new capture card. EVGA sent me their new XR1 external capture card. Okay, so let's talk about the XR1. So first of all, of course, the XR1 is an external USB capture card. That crazy knob that's on top of it is actually an audio controller. So think about this. If, say, Elgato's HD60S and a mix amp like uh, the Astro mix amp had a baby, this is what you get with the XR1. Uh, you basically have a, a controllable mix amp with a couple different inputs outputs that you can use for party chat, you can use for your headset audio and for monitoring. It's a really neat idea and it's the only capture card that I know of that does this. And it allows you to also capture a 1080p 60 signal straight into OBS. So again, you can do 1080p 60 capture, you can do 1080p 60 pass through, and then EVGA has this thing called advanced pass through, which when you enable it on the capture card using that knob, it allows you to pass through up to 1440p 144 hertz, and that will give you your native resolution and refresh rate that you want, but you're not recording. It cuts off the output to OBS. So that's the key to remember with that. It also gives you audio mixing through two 3.5 millimeter TRRS inputs, outputs, one for your headset and microphone, and then one for party chat, or in my case, I'm using it, I've got it actually hooked up to an output from my audio interface that then I could patch a bunch of different audio, you know, signals to, which is really neat. It also has the RGB grid that serves two functions. First is it's aesthetics, it's color. You know, you can do all the colors that you want. You can do different patterns. And it also perform, it serves a purpose of showing you the, your volume levels for each of those two channels that you have for your audio. Now this is OBS certified, as you saw in the box. It's the first device to do this. But basically what it means is that out of the box, without any extra drivers, without any extra software, you can plug this up to your computer and OBS will use it as a video capture device, which and audio too, which is really neat. A lot of people are like, man, I don't want to install any extra software or anything like that. And the fact you don't have to install that in drivers is really neat. Uh, they do have an app that you can use to control the colors of the RGB, control the uh, mixing functions for your audio and to update the firmware. But that's really it. That's all you need. And it's very functional and works really well. One of the things that's really neat that you don't really see, it's the first time I've ever seen it, is the USB cable that they give you. It has two uh, input ports on one end and then it has the USB-C on the other. The two USB-A type uh, jacks, one is the 3.0 that you would use for your video data. That's, that's you know how your PC is going to get a video from the capture card. And then the other is a 2.0 port that you can use for external power. Uh, so you can use an unused USB port or you can use an external power adapter, which is what I've done. And what's that? what that's going to do is going to kind of, you know, use it for the RGB and number two is going to stabilize your USB bus a little bit because if you have a bunch of devices on the same bus, they're all using the internal power of that USB. And once you get to a certain level, you're just going to start getting instability. You're going to have devices that drop offline. And when you hook up something like a video device, like a webcam or in this instance, a capture card, then it really takes up a lot and you can have some issues. So having that external power is actually really neat. And that's currently how I'm using it. I've added an extender cable, a uh, USB extender cable that I've plugged the power adapter to and then plugged the other end to this extra uh, cable. And what you get in the box, you get the XR1 itself, you get a, the 3.5 millimeter patch cable to use for party chat or you know to use for other functions that I'm using. Here, uh, you get an HDMI 2.0 cable, and then you get that USB cable that I just talked about, and then you get a quick guy. So pretty simple to set up. Again, no drivers or anything. It's just plug and play. You plug it in, and it works. So you would plug the USB cable into your stream PC, and then you would take the HDMI cable from your game PC or your console, 
and plug it into the HDMI input, which is right beside the USB cable. And then you would use the output HDMI for your monitor that you're going to game on. And then the two audio ports, the left one is for your headset, the right one is for the party chat or another, you know, whatever audio input you want to input it to using that cable. The way I have it hooked up for PC is I have the HDMI output going to my second monitor. So when I activate the advanced pass through, that will reconfigure my PC so that it can see both of my monitors at the same time. When I disable advanced pass through to stream or record with it, then my second monitor goes away and my gaming monitor will reconfigure to whatever I have it set cloned with the capture card. In my case, because I want high refresh rate, I have mine cloned at 1080p and 120 hertz. The capture card then can record at 1080p 60 and I can play at 1080p at 120, which is, you know, it's a compromise, but I think it's a good compromise if you're a PC player. Now for console, you would have to use the output for your game monitor, and then you would be slave to 1080p 60. For third generation, new uh, Xbox Series X or PS5 users, that might be a detractor for you because you've been looking forward to playing at 120 hertz. When streaming or recording, Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to do that with this. But to be honest with you, there's only one capture card out there, one external capture card out there that currently allows you to do that. And that is made by Avra Media and it uses Thunderbolt. And I don't know a ton of people that have Thunderbolt right now on their PCs. Uh, you have to have the latest and greatest uh, PC uh, motherboards to be able to do that. So you're not really going to find an external solution realistically. You would have to get an internal capture card, which is going to cost you about $150, maybe, well, yeah, about $100 to $150 more right now to be able to get that capability. So you got to consider that. But this is really geared toward consolers, I think, because of the fact that you have this built-in, what I want to call the mix amp, uh, because you have the controls that you can do, control the left and right. Uh, audio using the knob simply by pushing it right or left and then turning it left or right to lower the volume up and down and you know you have the party chat which you can link right up and you can hear your friends you can then record your friends to OBS so it's really neat uh, there is some other options out there that I thought about and I've played around with uh, you can actually have up to three microphones attached to this now and what you can do is you can use the two 3.5 millimeters to patch in powered microphones like for instance I have a battery powered lapel mic that I use a wireless one that I use sometimes when I'm recording stuff from a camera or you can use say like a mixer to plug into it using the 3.5 millimeter and then you can also have your shotgun mic on your camera itself feeding through the HDMI from your camera, which is a really neat idea. So you can have up to three. So that is a neat option to think about if you're doing, you're on the go, you have this packed up with you to a convention or something, and you want to plug it up to your laptop and do a quick interview, you do have the option to plug up to three different devices, which is neat. Uh, but let's talk about the positives of this uh, XR1 capture card. So first of all, the positives for me, I like that it's latency free video. The quality of the video is really good. Uh, the flat fact that it gives you flex, man, I can't speak. The fact that it gives you flexibility with audio is really neat. Uh, it's the only card that I know right now that gives you built-in, basically built mix amp type capability. The price is reasonable. When it came out, it was 169. The current price as of right now that I've checked is 189 on the EVGA's website, and they're all sold out right now. Go figure. That's the current thing with all new devices that are coming out lately. Uh, so considering where it falls within, say, Elgato's pricing, um, it falls right in line between the HD 60S and the HD 60 Plus, which does, the HD 60 Plus does give you the 4K 60 pass-through that the XR1 does not, but the XR1 gives you the audio controls that the HD 60S Plus does not. So, and I think that 
you know, this looks really neat on the desktop. Uh, it's a mirrored finish on top. The LEDs give you a neat customizable look that you can use for not, you know, if you want to make it look like your color that you use for your branding or whatever your favorite color is or a color combination, you can do that with this. And it also performs a function of giving you indications. Like right now, it's red telling me that it lost my HDMI input, which my monitor just went to sleep on my game PC. So it performs a function, and I like that. The negatives right now, so there's a couple negatives. Uh, of course, being a PC player, I want my high refresh rate while recording and streaming. So I cannot do that with this. That is a big negative. And for some of you that are getting the new gen consoles, that might also detract you from buying this. But I think for most console players, this actually fills in and gives a good solution for your recording and streaming capability. The fact that you don't have to use software for this, uh, that's really a, a positive. Um, but if you don't like OBS, well, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I, for XSplit, I have not personally tested it with XSplit. Do not know how it will work with those, but I do know it works well with OBS. Uh, you might need a ground loop isolator. I do have line noise in this 3.5 millimeter cable that they sent me. Uh, now, it's not just the cable. I've actually used my high quality Audio Technica patch cable and I get audio noise in that too. It's just the nature to be sometimes with analog signals from a PC. Uh, you just have ground differences and it just causes this ground uh, ground loop. So you can buy a ground loop isolator on Amazon. I looked at one right uh, that looked good and it was like eight bucks, eight ninety nine, nine bucks, something like that. Simple to hook up, easy to use. It would be nice if EVGA supplied one of those. They're not super expensive and you know you can get one, you know, add it to your box and it wouldn't even take up any extra packaging space, I don't think. The last thing I really think that they need to do is they need to update their quick guide and along with that kind of update what they have done. Now I say update, but they actually have. I actually got a message from uh, EVGA's product manager, Jacob Freeman, and they have gone and updated the website to kind of explain exactly what Advanced Pass Through does. Uh, there have been a couple of other reviewers that had no idea just opening the box and looking at this quick guide, what advanced pass through does because the quick guide really doesn't tell you um it's very vague and he used it when you think pass through you're thinking that you'll be able to record and play you know at the same time using the resolution it said and so you know at first glance you see 1440p 144 and you're like wow that's awesome but without understanding advanced pass through you can be kind of misguided so they have updated the website to explain exactly what advanced pass through does uh but the quick guide I think really needs that too. So they really need to update that. They're, it's just kind of lax in some information. And they really don't, and it's funny because they don't really talk about the use of this 3.5 millimeter party chat jack other than the party chat. Um, it is functional in other ways for PC and, and et cetera. It's there and you can use it for a bunch of different things. So take advantage of it. Uh, one of the uses that I've done, and I'm, I've had, like I said, I ha told you I have this patch to my audio interface. It's actually headphone output from my speaker, my studio monitor that is plugged into my audio interface. But I can go and use the software mixer voice meter that I use. I, I like voice meter potato. That's what I use to mix and send all my audio to my stream PC normally. But I can patch all those audio inputs from voice meter into this cable into my capture device and i can have what eight sources of audio going into this and have it mixed and everything which is really neat uh, so there is a lot of capabilities with this uh that i don't really think the quick guide necessarily talks about but for most part the quick guide does show you the basic stuff that most people would use it for uh, but i would like to see more information in it and of course, we talked about the advanced pass-through being confusing. They've, they're they addressing that now, which is good. Um, but I, I like overall, I do think this is a, a, a decent capture card. Uh, some of the other reviewers have critiqued the build quality a bit. Um, well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I agree with them that the unit is light. I mean, it doesn't have a ton of weight to it, but I mean... 
Will it have a ton of weight to it? I mean, do you really need to have a ton of weight to it to actually have it be a good build quality? I think the knob, actually, the way it feels, it's designed to feel that way. Um, it is a multifunction knob. You can push it down. You can. It's almost like a like a, a joystick or a pad uh, that you can move around and you can turn it to so to you know control volume and that sort of thing. So it's going to it. It does wiggle, I mean, but it's designed to do that. So I don't know, uh, you know, I think Harris Heller said he thought it would break in like a day or so. It's not that bad. It is not like that at all. I think he exaggerated it a bit, um, a lot, let's be honest. Uh, so overall, I think the build quality is fine. I've compared it to this, you know, Avro Media capture card that I've had for years. They both weigh the same. Uh, they both feel the same. I mean, you know, they both feel fine and this thing's lasted me for years and i've not had any issues with it i don't expect you to have any issues with the evga either uh, now one of the things i think it would be neat for portability purposes is to provide a bag that you can put this in or some sort of storage that would be neat um you know i would be willing to pay a few extra bucks to provide a bag that you could put this in and carry it with you when you're going on game cons or land events or whatever it would be neat but overall I'm pretty happy with it. I think the quality's there. Um, and, you know, I think a lot of console holders will be pretty happy with this. So go out there, give it a shot. I'll provide a link where you can uh, look at this on EVGA's website. Currently, like I said, it, it, I don't know if you can find it actually anywhere right now uh, as it has sold out. But again, I'll keep you updated. And I'll, once I can find links of where they're in stock, I will provide those in the description too. But other than that, guys, thank you for watching. Listen, if you like videos like this, you want to learn about streaming, you want to learn about audio, you want to learn about hardware that you need for streaming, and you want to learn where you need to put your money at, that you need to subscribe to this channel. This channel provides you all the information you need to get your stream looking professional, the equipment that you need to do that with without spending a ton of money. Your stream is your business, it's your hobby, but you don't need to spend a ton of money to do it. And that's why I wanted to show you how. So if you want that kind of information, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, like this video, I'd appreciate it. And if you have uh, any questions about the XR1, leave them in the comments below. I'll try my best to answer them. You can also join me every Thursday. Um, I'm usually streaming between 8 and 9 o'clock and doing a Thursday Q&A right here on the YouTube channel. You can ask your questions there also. So thank you very much, everyone. I do appreciate it. Have a great rest of your week. We'll see you later.